today we're going to talk about what we've done to the 80 and what we're going to do to the 80. And there's a lot that we've done and there's a lot that we plan to do. The next step that we're going to be doing after all of this is now undercarriage maintenance. We're going to be changing the rear main seal, we're going to service the gearbox, we're going to have a look at the clutch, we're going to check the rubbers, we're going to replace those things. In the engine there's some water pipes we want to check out um, and service it. Uh, even though she was serviced apparently three months ago, I still just want to do it for my own peace of mind. Um, but what we've done on the vehicle, so let me show you what we've done. The vehicle was bought with the ARB bumper. It came with a winch. We do have the positive node broken though. So that winch needs to come off and go away for the repair. It needs to be, something needs to be done. Got the red winch rope. So that is what I want to do on the front. We've got these lights, right, which are the standard lights. And then we've got these lights that we got from Johnny later at Bucky and Outdoor. And I've been inundated with requests to find where I got these lights. Guys from Australia, guys from America. Johnny supplies these lights. It's got a demon eye in it that is not street legal, but it's magnificent for photos. Like when you're taking photos at night, you have that red glow. It's beautiful with the diving light. So they are bright. They shine about 50, 60 meters in front of you but not for long distance driving uh, late at night. So they do their purpose, what they're supposed to do, their headlights. So what we are doing is we are getting a set of laser LED 9-inch lights from Flex Adventures. And these lights shine at 1,800 meters, one lux. So we are going to be testing out these lights and Flex has hooked us up with them. And I'm super excited about it because Saturday night we were driving from Dwas from Walker Bay. And on the normal roads, it was fine. But when we get the dark roads, you need that projection light down to see where the curves are. Even though we rely on the, on the Garmin Overlander, you still want to see if there's a buck or if there's a deer or if there's whatever on the road. A cow late at night, so that is so important. Um, so Flex is going to be hooking us up with that. And they're also giving us some other goodies. And this light's got a driving ring around it. And it's also got the projection light. So we'll be wiring that to a relay. It will be on a separate switch. So you do know the law with you cannot cross the center line of your vehicle with a light. So that's why we're not opting for a, a light bar. We're going with two individual lights because you're only allowed to have six lights really in front of your vehicle. So that's what we're going with. Then I have been getting a lot of questions about these bad boys. Why two antennas? So these antennas come from markets at MTech. And there's a very good reason why we have two. We often drive in convoys of 40, 50, 60 vehicles. And as the leader of a vehicle, you need to know that your sweeper is doing good. That the people in between you and the last vehicle, there's nobody hurt, there's nobody injured, there's nobody lost. So this vehicle on the long road, on the road, the way that this vehicle's curve, the way that this aerial, sorry, antenna, its curve is, is... I actually put a picture here so you can see. So if you look at this picture, you'll see that the way that this projects, it projects perfectly on road for distance. We get about 80 k's with this thing, which is insane, but it doesn't do that well in the mountain. It doesn't do bad, but it doesn't do amazingly well in the mountain. So this one we have connected when we're driving on the road in Conway. Then the way the stubby is set up is that the stubby projects a different radial beam when you actually transmit and receive. So it works better in mountainous reasons. As you can see at the graph here, that is how it projects. So when we're in the mountain areas, we switch to the stubby. And when we go back to the long road, we go to the long aerial. And it's very easy. It's an unclip clip in thing. We've got a Kenwood 25-watt uh, radio. With the, the combo together is brilliant. But also remember, when you mount an aerial, the number one thing that a lot of guys don't tell you is you need to ground that aerial to the body or to the negative terminal. Just got a bird landing here. So, the other thing with this antenna that we've got is we've got these tilt brackets. So sometimes you don't want it in your way when you're driving. Sometimes you can't fit in the car wash or wherever. Not in the mall. We're not going to the mall with the car. Once I clear that off the roof there, it'll be a different story. That I'll explain to you right now. But the vehicle's got a bit of surface rust here and there that the vehicle's going away for be taken out that will be in the next two three weeks before we really hit the long road um, there are things that came with the vehicle the alu cab awning came with the vehicle and it's a beautiful awning but a very rookie mistake was made when they when they had this awning is that the previous previous owner that had it obviously used it in a wet condition and never dried the unit out 
So he just rolled it up, put it in the bag and went home and left there forever. And it's got a bit of mildew on it. So tomorrow I'm coming to this exact forest. We're going to open it up. We're going to brush it. We're going to try and get the mildew off. Because sometimes you're in a camping environment and you can't dry your tent or you can't dry your, 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 your awning or your gazebo and you have to roll it up wet. It's, it's, it's a given. But when the rain subsides and you're at home and it's a good day, at least I'd say two days later, no later, dry it out. Otherwise you get a buildup of mildew and it gets a bad smell. So that's exactly what was done there. The awning is in good nick. There's nothing wrong with it. Just the mildew on the top. Which Alucad themselves have told me that it's going to be simple to get off. Um, then the big baby on the top is the spare wheel that is going to go to the back. We've got a wheel carrier from 79 Cruiser that we're going to modify and mount to the back. Now the nice thing with this vehicle is that the chassis mount comes all the way out to the back. So this bracket can clip onto there, drill through, weld another little bracket and it will carry the weight of the wheel. Because consumption and also the thing that I'm fearing is if I ever get a flat wheel, I cannot really get that wheel easily off there because it's blimmin' heavy. Um, yeah, so I need to change that like ASAP. That's my goal for tomorrow. Also, if I can get enough time in. LED park lights we've put in. We've tinted the vehicle. And what we've done is we've done a very unique UV coating, which is clear and see-through on the front windscreen, but it helps block out UV rays. Um, if you're wearing polarized sunglasses, you'll see a bit of a rainbow, but that's as much as you're going to get. But the reason why we did this is in, in my Pajeros, I'm used to climate control. I'm used to, you put this thing at 15 or 16, it comes to that exact temperature. This is a 1993 vehicle. There's no climate control. There's an aircon that blows really cold and a fan in your face and that's it. And there's no vents at the back, only in the front. So we need to force that air all the way through a very large cabin. So the more that we can do to make sure the vehicle is going to cool effectively inside, the better. So that's why we've got the tents. I'm going to do some dampening in the doors and all of that. I'm going to do heat shields around the... I'm going to do... I'm sorry. Yeah, the hardy does. I'm going to do heat shields around the transmission cover um, just to block out as much hot air as I can. Maybe wrap the exhaust with that exhaust tape that, that blocks out heat. Because we need to be cooling the vehicle if you're going to travel far, especially with the wife and the kids. You don't want a vehicle that's going to be baking, otherwise nobody's happy. That's about all that we've done Yeah. Now I'm going to show you the next big thing, which is for me the thing that completed this vehicle. We've got a terrain tamer spring set in the vehicle right around. And we've got a set of, uh, I can't get to the name of the shocks, it's blue and yellow. The reason why I'm not really fixated on the name is because we're going to be changing it out to terrain tamer. We also want to get a rear diff lock in the vehicle because it doesn't have. But I'm actually swaying towards the front diff lock. And that's where my, I've been watching a lot of different videos that some people say front, this is rear. Some people say rear versus front. I'm swaying towards the front diff lock. I'm even looking at the locker system. Um, and that is something that I need to get in the vehicle because when I was in Krabo, I could feel that it doesn't have, I have to choose my line very well, which I'm capable of doing. But I want that added security of a diff lock on the vehicle. Um, that's what we're doing here on the vehicle. Now, we've got a 3-inch lift. And you're going to see what complements this beautiful 3-inch lift. Which you'll see it in the other video, but I'll explain to you more about it. So, over here, we've got this beautiful, beautiful set of Dirty Life bead locks. And this was sponsored to us by Tire Life South Africa. And we spoke to George, and I've been in a tub. Tire Life and Cooper Ambassador for the last two or three years. And Cooper's my choice. And not because I'm sponsored by them. And that's something that people have to understand. I bought my first set of Coopers on my Silver Pajero. I had another brand on before. And I wasn't happy with the noise level. And when I switched to Coopers, I got a lot of advice. Because they silicone filled that they're going to be much quieter. And that's how my relationship started with Cooper because I started tagging them and saying that I'm really in love with this tire and we just joined forces then and it's been a pleasure since then working with him. So this is the Cooper tire that we got. This is the Cooper ST Max, right? This is 50% road and 50% off-road. It's just below a mud terrain tire. This is a 285-70-17 tire. We took this to Walker Bay now and we deflated to 0.8 to 0.6 bar. This thing Ate up the trail without diff lock on this vehicle. We were able, we could stop anywhere and just pull away. 
the tire is magnificent. And on the road, that is the, always the big thing for me. Because as nice as off-road is, a lot of the time is spent on tar roads. This tire is basically silent. And I'm happy for that. And paired with these dirty life beadlocks. In our other vehicle, we never had beadlocks. And we were always falling victim to sand going in the bead and de beading, especially at low pressures and sharp turns. With a bead locker, you're not going to have your tire coming off. You're not going to get sand in here. Um, it's a very tricky process how they put it together. I watch them. It's cross torquing from here. We go at 16 Newton meters first, and then we go up to 30 Newton meters to get this an even fit right around here so that the vehicle's balanced, uh, the wheels are balanced, and the tire fits properly. So these are like a gold bronze color. They are absolutely beautiful. They go with the vehicle like you won't believe. I mean, you've seen the pictures on Instagram and Facebook. And the nice thing with them is they're 17 inch. They are heavy. Any beadlocks are going to be heavy. But the nice thing is we've got that security that we can go down to low pressures on this wheel and not de-bead. And again, paired with this tire, we are basically almost invincible. So... We've got five tires and five wheels. And there's another thing that we always try to talk to guys about. These guys often go buy themselves wheels and mags and bigger wheels and all of that. And they buy four. And they leave the standard spare wheel under the vehicle. You have to understand that you cannot engage four by four. And you can, but you'll damage your diffs and your gearbox and all of that. If you have two different size wheels because of rotational forces, you need to make sure that both wheels are exactly the same size. So if you go and go buy a wheel that this is a 33, but your previous wheel was a 31 and it's still under your van or at the back or on the back lid or whatever because you don't want to fork out that money. I know it's not always easy. You're going to sit with a problem when you need to change your wheel and 4x4. If you need to change your wheel anywhere where you need to 4x4, you're stuffed because you're not going to be able to engage 4x4 without damaging your vehicle. So I can't say more about this wheel. This wheel is this this just... It's like every time I look at these wheels, they're just... Oh, they're just so beautiful. So we're running on 2.2 bars here on the road with this thing. And then we're going, uh, yesterday I was playing in sand. I went down to 1.4 bar. Um, I am running like, uh, you'll see later on my AOB compressor. But I need to maybe switch to a dual piston because it is struggling to fill up this from 0.8 onwards. It's taking it really, really long and the, and the compressor is warming up. This is obviously manual hubs. We're going to be servicing the manual hubs. We also are going to be fitting rock sliders. We don't know which ones yet. We're going to find someone to work with. I need something that stands like a step for the kids and for myself because I am short, okay? So I need something that I'm going to be able to jump on fairly easily and get in the vehicle. Um, and also to protect the body work of the vehicle. There are nothing else that I really want to do to the vehicle aesthetically besides the blowover. Um, and let's, I'll show you the back of the vehicle and what we've done to the back of the vehicle and then we'll show you the interior of the vehicle. Then at the back, we haven't done anything at the back yet, but I have got that swing on that's going to bolt to the chassis here. We're going to get a hole here and we're basically going to have the wheel sitting right here. Um, we've got the gas tank that we've added and that max tax were added. But something that I find extremely important that we've added in the vehicle now lately is this GSM antenna from MTEC. So you basically tilt it down and you can lift it up like that. So this thing is not going to be able to give yourself a reception where there is no reception. But what it's going to be able to do is take one bar and boost it to four to five bars. So that is very important because sometimes we go away and we leave the children at home um, and we need to be in contact. And when we're at Dwarsbeck Trout Haven Farm now camping, a lot of the guys who were with us were businessmen, managers, owners. And the problem we found is every morning the guys are huddled together at this one rock to get cell phone reception. And I know a lot of people say, oh, you know, we go away to not be in contact. But a lot of the time, those jobs and those businesses that we own and those positions that we hold afford us the luxury to be able to go out there for extended four or five days at a time. Um, especially if we're 10 days away and we're in the middle of nowhere. So we need to be in contact just to make, and it also gives you a bit of peace of mind. There's, I'm sure a lot of you know, there's nothing worse than being out in the middle of nowhere and your mind is constantly, is everything okay at work? Is my kids okay? Is my mother-in-law okay? I don't know if, if you think about that. We've got a squirrel visiting us here. So he's just coming to see what we're doing. Let me unlock the vehicle quickly. So what we've done at the back of the vehicle is minimal, 
But what we need, like I said in the last ball, I went over the top. I'm, I'm learning here. We've got our Flex Adventures fridge, which is strapped down. We're hoping to go with the set of drawers. And we've got Paul Lowe, another guy we know that do, does dog barriers. He's going to do us a barrier up there that's going to allow us to basically make sure that nothing at the back here becomes a projectile through the front and we're able to strap things to this. So that's also something that's important that guys don't think about is if you've got this bottle of water here and you break hard and this bottle comes flying through at the back of your head, it's a projectile. So you need to always have a barrier in between yourself and the things at the back, especially if you're packing higher than the seats. But even if you're not packing higher than the seats, in an SUV, that is so important. We've got our two ammo boxes. Uh, we've got our Flexo power. That is something we don't leave home without. It's our solar panel with our, our power. And what else? We've got a little sound system, obviously, just to get a bit of decent audio. But if you look in here, what we've done is I've got these magnetic lights that basically clip on anywhere. And they go through the three colors, obviously orange being so that the mechis doesn't eat us up. And being magnetic, it's amazing. Um, and they're rechargeable, USB-C. So we've put that at the back. What we've also done is we've put another one here just to light up the back. And if you hold it in, it goes to your bright white. But you don't always want to go to your bright white because you don't want the mechis. You want to keep it as yellow or red as possible. In the back, first aid kit, number one. We've got a little fire suppression can over there. We've got our air jack. We've got a bra grid. We've got a little portable bra. This I'm hoping to turn into some sort of a work surface because someone said to me a while ago, welcome to the tailgate family. And sitting on the back of a cruiser is so liquor. But I feel it can also be a functional space. It could be somewhere where we could chop things and we could get things sorted out. And this is also a very wasted space in here, as I've seen in a lot of videos, that you actually get boxes and lids that go here that allow you to put things like recovery gear or first aid kits in the tailgate. Then we've got the MTEC booster, which is sitting over there on the edge. And that is the unit that takes that signal up top there and brings it down to the bottom. We've replaced the interior lights with LED. But I'm going to be turning that to yellow soon again because you park in the wild like this and suddenly you start the van and the van's filled with mechis from the white light. And they come in an instant. You know, you can have your windows closed and you open the door and suddenly they're all there under white light. Um, that's about it. We've got over here in the corner nicely tucked away, which I'm going to build in here. We've got the ARB single, single piston compressor. But I think I need to go dual because it's not enough air for these 33 inch wheels then we've got from the front we've got another anderson plug coming from the battery the vehicle is wired for dual battery ready there is everything there but i'm thinking to go lithium with the dc to dc charger and flex adventures is now supplying switch panels so they are going to be giving us a switch panel that we will be mounting over here we will be able to switch on this light we'll be able to switch on the compressor we'll be able to switch on the Vodacom booster or the signal booster. We're also going to be doing rock lights in the awning, one at the back, two on the side, and that we will wire to here so that if we want to light up the back of the vehicle here, and if we want to light up the side of the vehicle there, we know that we're able to just do it from the back here. So that is something that we are definitely, we're getting that on Monday, I'm very excited about it. That's coming along with the laser lights. Um, that's about it that we've done in the back here. We do have a set of beautiful black charcoal escape gear seat covers coming. That's going to be covering the back seats and the two front seats, as well as a dash cover, and as well as a transmission cover. So the AT series has got a little ups and it's got a little downs. It's a beautiful vehicle, but it is also an older vehicle. So things weren't as electronic that time. So we've added a USB point in the, the, the console box. And we've, um, I'll take you to the front actually. So what we've done at the back isn't much, but we've got the seat covers coming on. But I've also stripped all the window mechanisms, right? And I've greased them and redone them because they were very slow. And I think the previous owner never actually used the back of the vehicle. Because these seats are magnificent. Um, and the windows were very sticky. So were the rubbers. So were the switches that activate the auto lighting. But all of it works though. Just need a good grease up and we need to clean it. Then we've added a 12 volt cigarette lights point here. 
for the kids to plug in phones and tablets. And the reason why I opt for this and not USB is because if a USB module damages, you have to replace the whole module. Where with a 12 volt socket, you can just buy a cigarette lighter charger and plug it in, and if it damages, you just plug it out. We've added some red lighting, which I'll show you quickly. Uh, because the vehicle is very dark, so you'll see we've got red lighting here and we've got the matching in front. Just so it spoiled us in the Pajero that we had the football lighting so you don't fumble when something falls and it's, it's, it's not a mission. The vehicle has only got one cup holder. So we are working on that. We may be going to do the dual cup holders. Um, or maybe we're going to change this box and actually do something better. But I like this box because headache tablets, heartburn, you know, all those things. You want to have a toilet roll with wipes laying in the box there and not be fumbling. Even though we've got a lot of space here, as of the parent and little things that you need, sunglasses, you want it close to you. So that's what we've kind of done here. And I mean, look at this. Look at the ashtray in <laughs> So um, that's what we've done in the back. So let's show you the front quickly. So in the front of the vehicle, we've done a few modifications also. We've also got the rear lights. We've serviced the window panels. We've got a tanny come on here, which is temporary until our new ones come that match the seat covers. A dashboard cover we've got our 25 watt area and then we've added a volt meter here because that is so important for me even though the vehicle has got a volt meter it's not 110 percent it doesn't give you a reading it just shows you zero and 18 and halfway in between so we've got something that shows us like we, we are we're standing still now on 12.4 we've obviously got the garmin overlander so with the atcs there's no light here right there's only a light at the back of you so we've added a red light in the little glovey box, whatever it's called, I don't know. And one in the, in the cubby hole so that we've got lighting. Um, and then we've added a 12 volt point here also, because there is a 12 volt point here in front, but it's difficult to have the cables in between a manual gearbox. So we've added one in the box, so there's a cable coming out all the time. Pop the iPhone in, sorted. Um, there's not much that we've done in here, right? In terms of that, because everything was in really, really good nick. Um, I've added one or two switches for the demon lights. Um, I'm looking to add switches for whatever else we're going to add on. Maybe a light bar. The spotlights will have one here. And we've got the, the radio here. And then we've added a sound system. Because for the long road, decent music is what you want. So we've got a Pioneer head unit with kicker mids in here. And kicker at the back. No, no, Pioneer at the back. And a little 18-inch subwoofer. So we, it's not crazy loud, but it's quality sound on the long road. Um, and it's Bluetooth. We don't have a reverse camera, and I don't think I need it because I'm fairly used to the judgment of a SUV. So it's not going to be something that that is going to really bother us that much. But besides that, that is kind of all that I can think of in the front of the vehicle that is something that needs to be addressed. One thing that's very interesting, oh, and also number one, is if you slide the seat back, you see we've got our fire extinguisher mounted to the seat mounts. So this is the first thing that I bought because I'm very, after my trailer burning out in Eisner, and even before that, I'm very over the idea of safety first. So fire extinguisher under your seat because you cannot run to the back of your vehicle to look for a fire extinguisher. It can be packed full. You want to be able to take this thing out and run to the other vehicle or run to your vehicle. So this for me is very important. We do keep it Velcroed in, Velcro straps just off, so that you can see just with a bit of a tighter grip, but you can still just pull it. So even if you're outside of the vehicle, you can just open the door and pull this thing. It's number one, you need to have a fire extinguisher. That should be something that should be part of roadworthing a vehicle. You shouldn't be allowed to drive a vehicle on the road if you don't have a fire extinguisher. Forget a triangle and that for me, a fire extinguisher is a time statless and a first aid kit um pretty much that's all that has been done here inside but there's something very interesting i want to show you um so if you let me let me let me just bring the camera here this vehicle was serviced on the 13th of the 5th 2013 at 387. i bought this vehicle at 450 which is 60,000 kilometer plus minus difference which means that this vehicle has done 60,000 kilometers from 2013 to 2023, which is 6,000 kilometers a year. And it's got a full service history. So this vehicle's in brilliant nick. And this is the kind of vehicle you want to look at. Buying an older vehicle 
is not always as bad as people say. Um, as long as it's a service you see, and as we know, SUVs are engineered completely different to how normal cars are engineered. Thank you.